English 201, Week 4, Part 3. Um, cool. See, when you, when you know, well, everybody, people know, but when you're used to, pra when you practice enough with metaphor, with irony, with theme, you start noticing it everywhere. And little sentences that didn't seem very important, once you are armed with the tools of metaphor, irony, and theme, suddenly seem much more important. Um, so these little sentences that I'm grabbing suddenly have extra meaning. This is kind of, this is sort of the point of the class. After you take the class, I think the idea is, and I think this, this, this works better for the advanced classes when you move on. If you, if you take a film class with me, um, or you take a, um, and by the way, I'm teaching a film class next semester. It's probably going to be online again, but, um, you're welcome to take it with me. Um, the, um, the Kafka will help you in that film class. Uh, the, 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 um, when you take a class like this, it helps you notice things in every story that you watch. Um, you will notice irony, you will notice metaphor, you will notice theme, they are everywhere. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, so, so right now we're noticing it in this story and then we're gonna practice noticing it in Shakespeare plays and then we're gonna sort of um, uh, move on. All right, let, let's get another little detail from summary that I fucking love. It, on page two, um, at the bottom of the first paragraph, um, his family, he's got turned into a bug in his room, but his family can't get in to see him um, because he congratulated himself on his cautious habit acquired from traveling of locking all the doors at night, even when he was not at home. I'm uh, sorry, even when he was at home. That's an amazing little detail. Um, He's a traveling salesman, so of course he locks his doors because he doesn't want to get anybody breaking in to steal his stuff from him when he's on the road, travels, you know, selling things to people door to door uh, all over the country. Uh, but he also, when he is home, locks all the doors so his family cannot come in his room when he is in there. That little detail, summary, right? When you do, if I, if you're doing a summary. That seems like an incredible, so most people if they're doing a summary are just going to be like, he gets turned into a bug and, you know, his family is very upset. Um, but I think if you're doing a good job on summary, you should pay attention to that because that tells you a lot about what's going on with the character's psychology. Um, he doesn't like his family. He locks them every night when he stays at home and he's usually on the road traveling, but when he comes home to his family's house, he locks all the doors, his, his multiple doors into his room and he locks them all. Um, that says a lot about the relationship between him and the rest of his family. He has a mother, a father, and a sister. And it says a lot about the relationship he has to his family. That tells you what his family life is like, because I bet when, when you live with your family, I bet you don't lock your door so that nobody can get in. All, I don't mean, I mean, obviously you get mad sometimes or you want some privacy or you're changing clothes or you're having a, you know, I don't know, phone call or whatever. I don't know. Maybe you lock your door sometimes. He locks the doors all the time against his own family, people he should be able to trust not to open the door and barge in on him. Um, but he doesn't do that. Uh, he locks all the doors. It tells you so much about his relationship to his family um, and sort of prepares you for the terrible directions this story is going. Um, and again, it's depressing if you're in the story, but we're not in the story, so I get to enjoy how well written it is. For example, that's a great little detail about how he always locks the doors. Um, his family home is a... Uh, oh, so... So he says, he, uh, and right after that, he says the first thing he wanted to do was get up in peace without being disturbed, get dressed, and most of all, have his breakfast. Um, again, like he thinks this is going to be like a normal day. He still, he says, you know, what, what he really needs is to get up and, and get uh, and get dressed. How is he going to get dressed? He's a giant cockroach. He can't wear clothes. Um, but it's this weird, if you have a dream where you get turned into a bug, you'd be like, oh boy, I gotta, gotta, gotta get out of here. Oh no, I, I don't have any clothes on. I'm gonna try to put some clothes. I can't get these pants to fit. I'm a bug. Um, so it's very, it has a dreamy quality. And see, some people, when they see that, they hate it. They hate it because they say, this guy's acting like a fucking weirdo. I don't get this story. Why would he act like this? Um, because what they expect is the world and the story is basically just exactly the same as our world, and everybody over there should act exactly like us because it's supposed to be realistic. This is not realistic in that way. Um, this is like a dream. Dreams are not realistic. They are strange, and this is a very strange experience he's having, and it's a very strange experience we're having to read it. So a lot of people are just like, this guy's an idiot. This is not how I would react. This is dumb. Um, 
Usually when stories have fantastic elements in them, what they like to do is have the characters act like you would. So um, when somebody gets superpowers in a movie, they're often like, woohoo, I can fly, because that's probably what you would say if you got superpowers and could fly. But this is not an escapist fantasy. This is not, you're not supposed to be like, oh, but when you watch Superman movie, you're like, boy, I wish I was Superman. But when you watch Wonder Woman, you're like, oh, I wish I was Wonder Woman. But in this one, um, there was a weird detail in the Wonder Woman movie that someone wished they could be like Wonder Woman, and that was a bad thing. That's really strange. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, don't, don't so many people in the audience wish they were Wonder Woman, and then the character in Wonder Woman wishes she was Wonder Woman, and it's bad? Like, that's a horrible thing for her to do? I don't know. It was an odd detail. Um, cool. Okay, this is going pretty well. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, another great detail. Top of page three. He says, he, he says, how simple everything would be if somebody came to help him. Um, but nobody, well, he, nobody's going to come help him. He says that his father and the maid, oh, I should talk about the maid for a second. Ugh, I hate doing this. I have to do this. Um, my students are often uh, really confused by this story. Uh, and this comes up a lot. It comes up a lot in old movies. It comes a lot in old books. Um, they have a maid um, and they have a cook and they end up firing the cook pretty quickly and they get a different cheaper maid. But like, they have a maid and a cook. And so my students tend to imagine that the Samses are wealthy um, or wasting money in some way um, because they have a maid and a cook. Because if you had a maid and a cook in modern day America, that would be pretty fancy. Um, it's, it's very difficult. You're just going to have to trust me when I say that they don't have a ton of money. Um, it's very confusing to try to take like think about how we live now like a poor person now looks quite different from a poor person then and a rich person now looks quite different from a rich person then um actually the rich people probably look basically the same um but but it's tr it's tricky to take to take financial situations and back them up 120 years and hope that they make sense so for example you might think that the samsas are rich because they have a cook and a maid right because if you had a cook and a maid you would be rich but Remember, they don't have a car, they don't have electricity, they don't have iPhones, they don't have a computer, whereas most people now kind of need those things um, at the bare minimum. Plus, you probably got a TV. So, like, um, it's 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 just hard to like like you like people have washers and dryers and and like that doesn't necessarily mean that you're rich because you want a washer and dryer dryer although it does if a washer and dryer in New York City means that you're rich because there's no space for it see so it's like um, it's it's tricky to do that so you just have to trust me when I say that they don't have a ton of money um, it's just that I think having a I'll put it this way I think it's cheaper to have a maid and a cook back then than to have an iPhone now um but most people have an iphone now um so it's it's just hard to translate these things in terms of money you're just gonna have to trust me um <laughs> one of my friends um uh worked in the peace corps and was in it was in burkina faso africa which is one of the poorest countries on earth and for some reason i don't remember the why but they were watching a movie together where they were watching boys in the hood i don't know if you've seen boys in the hood but it's like you know it's like a sort of gangster movie directed by John Singleton about sort of hoodlums and criminals. Um, and the people are Burkina Faso, and, and of course it's about the, the characters in the movie, Boys in the Hood are, are poor and they are robbing people for money. But the African, the, the Burkina Faso kids were confused because the family in the movie has a washer dryer. And they were like, they must be really rich to have a washer dryer because of course in Burkina Faso, Africa, if you had a washer dryer, you'd be like the wealthiest person in the country. Um, but in boys in the hood it you could have a washer dryer and still be quite poor so it's just it's just complicated so just trust me when i say that they are not an upper class family even though they have a maid and a cook don't picture them living in some beautiful house they live in like a crummy tiny apartment okay um cool all right this is going well i'll pick this up in the next video